done, stand to rise. Let us listen to the Holy Gospel. Peace be with all. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Let us be attentive. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi came from the east and arrived in Jerusalem. Where is the newborn king of the Jews, they said. We saw his star as it's rising and have come worship him. When the king Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophets, and you, Bethlehem, land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judea, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Hero called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and worship him. After their audience with the king, they set out, and behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were exceedingly joyous at seeing the star and entering the house saw the child with Mary his mother. They prostrated themselves and worshipped him. Then they opened the treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, to their country, by another way. Glory to Jesus Christ. What is Christmas? Why these readings chosen by the church? Christmas, according to St. Paul, we heard, marks a new era in the history of humanity. The fullness of time. A new era because the aim of God is now fully manifested. The aim for which God created all things. And we humans are in his image and likeness at the summit of his creation. Belonging to this summit of God's creation, we are uniquely called to open our hearts to sonship of the one of the Holy Trinity. With the mystery of Christmas, we are called to worship God the Father inside the intimate prayer of the incarnate <coughs> second person of the Trinity and through him. If we do not open our hearts to this intimate prayer of Jesus Christ, to his Abba, to his Father, 
we remain slaves. We remain without real freedom. The intimate prayer of Jesus celebrated in our hearts makes us free, filled with hope of good immortal life in the heavens and the immortal glory of the angels and communing with Christ as St. John Chrysostom prays when giving thanks for the Divine Liturgy. When we welcome the Divine Aim manifested by the birth of Christ in Bethlehem, immersing ourselves in Jesus' prayer to his Abba, we discover that outside of the prayer of Jesus in us, we remain slaves. The freedom we possess is only mistaken freedom. We remain unconscious that we are enslaved to the world and the world's subjection to the devil. The prayer of Jesus alone, prayer that takes up our whole lives, prayer that is none other than communing to Jesus' mysterious prayer, that prayer brings true, real freedom. Christmas is this entrance into Christ's freedom. Christmas genuinely received, is becoming the true worshippers that the Father seeks, becoming one with the little child of Bethlehem lying in the manger. He heard in the Gospel, by a mysterious intervention of grace, Magi follow the star. And to the amazement of all, they desire to become true worshippers of God. They sought to worship God in the mystery of his incarnation. The Magi say on their arrival in Jerusalem, in Jerusalem, we have come to worship the newborn king of the Jews. And a little later, they are overcome with exceedingly great joy. They reach new freedom as they enter the house where the child was with Mary, his mother, having been guided again by the star. They prostrate, bow down before Jesus, worship him, open their treasures, and offer him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. What do gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh express? They express the major in their worship include everything. Their worship is with their eyes. Their worship is with their touch. Their worship is with their smell, with their life and death. True worship, true celebration of Christmas, encompasses the multiple dimensions of the human being. Christmas is, a, is first a day to worship God with psalms. Because Joseph and Mary, surround the newborn child, Jesus, are faithful Jews. They pray with the Psalms. In the cave of Bethlehem, we can hear what they say with all their hearts. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. He is our God, and we are the people of his pasture. Let 
us go to his dwelling place. Let us extol the Lord our God. Let us worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Let us worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. I will worship the Lord in holy attire. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of the nations shall worship before him. All the proud of the earth shall bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust. All kings will fall down before him. All nations come to you, O Lord, and glorify your name. This is the song. Christmas is, at the same time, the day of divine liturgy, that which we're celebrating right now. The day we worship through our holy priests. The day we worship through our icons, which are doors by which heaven and earth connect. The day we worship through singing of holy texts, handed down generation after generation from the early worshippers of Christendom. Christmas is a day we worship through flowers, through incense, above all, through receiving in our mouths the bread of life, the bread of heaven the most holy body and blood of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Christmas is worship through every aspect of daily life. Worship through the 12-course Christmas meal of the Ukrainian tradition. Worship through Christmas family reunion. Worship through welcome of the poor caring for the sick, visiting the prisoners, interceding for the victims of violence all over the world. True worship of Christ in the manger is the blossoming of true freedom. It is worship spread to all things, to every aspect of our lives. It is a wisdom that overcomes all obstacles, all the obstacles set up by the Herods, by all who falsely pretend to know what our freedom is about. This is Christmas. This is the day of birth of our Savior.